What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here, continuing our Nightmare on Elm Street review series is now we're on to part four, The Dream Master. I know this is the one for a lot of people where it kind of tails off, a lot of people kind of give up on the franchise once we start getting into part four, or part five and six. This is kind of the birth of the MTV Freddy and all that kind of stuff, but today you're going to hear my positives, my negatives, and my rating for this film because I think there's still a lot of fun to be had with this movie. I'm excited to talk about this one, so let's do this. Roll it. So Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master, is the sequel to Dream Warriors, bringing, bringing back a lot of our fun characters from Dream Warriors. We got Joey back, we got Roland, and we got Kirsten coming back. The only thing with that one is we recast it from Patricia Arquette to Tuesday Night. For me, that's actually going to be a positive. I didn't really talk about this in my Dream Warriors mad, rad movie review, was that I think Patricia Arquette wasn't really that tone tuned a fine actress at that time i know that was very early in her career but i knew she, she grew into a great actress at that time i just didn't think she did the role that great so i think tuesday night actually plays a more tragic uh, version of the character that i enjoy so i like the portrayal of this character and this version of the character in dream master better than dream warriors so that's a positive for me another positive is that we have rennie harlan as our director and what that means is that you're going to get style over substance and this film is dripping with style we have aesthetic atmosphere the colors just the rooms the buildings every set design all the stuff it all has so much character involved in it add to that even the kills the kills are so creative too in this film it's much like a like I said you realized it in a dream or you saw this crazy ass design and then you made it come to fruition on screen like that's how the kills are and that's how the rooms are and the aesthetic and the atmosphere so yeah Rennie Harlan being the director of this film is a positive for me because I think you can do that in a Nightmare on Elm Street film very style over substance for some people that's not going to work because they want more invested characters they want better dialogue better story and they want to be more emotionally invested that's not this kind of nightmare on elm street film like i said this is much more you're here to have fun kind of thing add to that we have a fantastic soundtrack i think this might be my favorite soundtrack out of all the nightmare on elm street films dream warriors got some really good bangers too but dream masters got like all these cool pump up rock songs that like you you just want to work out or you want to jump in the ring and kick someone's ass like that's the kind of songs that are in this movie so yeah soundtrack a banger for sure great positive is that this is robert england discovering this other version of freddy krueger this more fun filled freddy krueger more one-liners you can just see robert england much more comfortable in the role at this time and i think he's just having a blast and like I said a lot of the crazy one-liners and then the kills and the scenes that he gets yeah freddy krueger's really here to stay and this is when that pop, pop culture icon thing was just full of blaze i believe this was 1988 or 89 that's when this film came out so yeah it was full of blaze at this time in the 80s for freddy krueger craze and yeah nightmare on elm street part four really capitalized on that with a lot of cool sequences like one of my favorites is tuesday night's dream sequence when she's on the beach and then you see freddy's like claw come in like a shark just swooping through the sand so a lot of cool sequences in this movie for sure I also really enjoy our characters in this film, and this sets up one of my favorite final girls in this movie, Alice. Alice ends up becoming our new protagonist character after Joey. I know, spoiler alert, Joey, Roland, and Kirsten get taken down. Freddy Krueger comes back, and he kills the people from Dream Warriors and then starts going after Alice and her crew and they start slowly dying off but what Alice finds out is that she's able to absorb a part of all the people that pass away like even her brother her brother's fantastic character in this movie karate he's got a lot of fun one-liners and positive messages in this movie and I like him he supports his sister and he's there for her so he's a fantastic brother character in a movie and I think him and Alice perfect and when he dies how she's able to take in like the his knowledge of martial arts and all that stuff and then she's ready to kick freddy's ass full on man i'm so there for it so the buildup of alice's character is one of my favorite things about this film as well before we get on to the other stuff and the negatives and the rating and everything i want to plug the courage the cowardly dog videos me and steve will be continuing those videos we're going to be deep diving some more courage and we're getting into season two now so make sure you stay tuned to the channel because those videos will be dropping pretty soon as well but now that we talked positives let's get a little bit into the negatives and one thing is one huge thing for me the biggest thing in negative is that the dialogue the, the pure 
clearly the script in this film I think is pretty bad. There's some awful cheesy lines in here, just dialogue that not even really good actors can deliver and you would feel anything for it. So that's the thing that kind of sucks. That's the thing that hurts a lot of the protagonist characters and our kid characters is that a lot of the dialogue between them is just cringy as hell. And like I said, that's one thing when you go for style over substance, that's Rennie's thing is he doesn't really pay attention too much to certain things like that. And it's more about, like I said, the creativeness of bringing to life on screen some wild images and stuff like that and what they're able to realize on screen. So yeah, when you do that and you sacrifice that, that's what you're sacrificing for the style. Your substance, your characters, your story, your dialogue, all that stuff is going to take a hit when you do that. Another negative for me is that how they resurrect Freddy in this film is kind of, it's kind of weird. It's just kind of out there. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's not that I hate it. I laugh at it and I have fun with it sometimes, but it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Like, even when I show my kids, like, my daughters watch it, they're like, what? Like, what the, f like, it doesn't really click. Like, I think Dream Child does something a little better. Hot take, I actually like Dream Child a little better than this film. That is a hot take because a lot of people don't say that, so I'm going to be excited when we get to Dream Child. There's a lot to digest and talk about with that movie, but yeah, how Freddy Krueger gets realized and resurrected in this film, especially after they dispatched him in Dream Warriors, it just kind of doesn't make any sense. The negative with this film, I would say, is probably in the third act. When we get into the third act, it does tail off a little bit for me. I have more fun with, like, I would say, like, the last ten minutes. It's just, like, the last ten minutes of the movie. I have a lot more fun with, like, the first parts of the movie and stuff and the setup for Alice. And then once we get into the third act, it's a little bit clunky, a little bit junky, like, at that end part and stuff like that. But, like I said, I'm excited, too, because this does set up and go into Dream Child. We're going to have a lot of fun talking about that one. But Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, Dream Master, like I said, I still highly recommend this film. This is still a franchise that I have fun with. Like I said, I return to this franchise often, and I love enjoying these movies. And these are slasher films that I really just have a special place in my heart. So Dream Master for me, rad rating. Let's get it out of the way. The rad rating for the Dream Master is going to be a 6.5 out of 10. Like I said, that's still a strong rating. It could be a lot stronger, though. Like I said, if we had some better dialogue, some more passes in the script room, and a much more stronger third act and ending, and this film would have got lifted to like a 7 or 8 out of 10. It would have been just as good as Dream Warriors to me if they would have did that. So Dream Master, like I said, I still highly recommend this one still stay tuned to the channel please like the video that definitely helps out the channel subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime i post a video because we're going to be continuing this review series i believe i'm actually going to be uh watching strangers chapter one i'm going to get a chance to go to the theaters so we're going to check that out so there'll probably be a review on the channel for that so be sure like i said there's a lot of content a lot of stuff coming i'm going to continue the question of the day videos that short that i did question of the day just really really took off so I think I'm gonna do that like every other day drop a short video where I just answer like a question of the day that was a lot of fun as well but most importantly you all know what's up have a safe and happy day peace out